Hello, lovely internet strangers. This is a video where I will talk about my personal relationship to my Latina, Latino, Latinx identity and give some more context to my thoughts on the topic. So I have never revealed this specific detail on my channel because I do my best to keep as many details about myself obscured just because I'm paranoid, even though this disguise is not really obscuring my identity from anyone who actually knows who I am. But my Latin American origins are Puerto Rican. So I am in an interesting spot in the Latino community because Puerto Ricans, although many ignorant people are unaware of this fact, are American citizens. When I referred in a previous video about Latinx to migrants versus immigrants, Puerto Ricans would be considered migrants if they move from the island to the continental United States because they are already citizens. They are not coming from another country here, which would make them immigrants. They are simply moving from one territory, one part of the United States to another. So let's talk about my family and my origin story and where I am now. My grandparents are both Puerto Rican. My grandparents did not meet on the island. They met in New York City after they had both migrated there. This was during the Great Migration in the 1950s where there was a huge wave of Puerto Ricans that moved to the city. So they met, popped out some kids. By the time I came around, they were living back on the island. So my entire experience of them was in Puerto Rico. But my father married someone who is not Puerto Rican, someone who is of Eastern European origins, but also born in the United States. So my father is the son of migrants. My mother is the daughter of immigrants. Anyway, so he married outside the Latino community. And there's a lot that goes on in the Latino community that outsiders quote unquote don't know about. Like that in the Puerto Rican community, there can be a divide between people who are from the island versus people that aren't. So my father never felt super connected to his identity because of the way that identity was constructed for him by his parents. So I was not raised speaking Spanish. My father did not speak Spanish in the household. And my father has an interesting relationship to the Spanish language because he did grow up speaking it as his first language, but because his parents wanted him to assimilate, so to speak, and he had older siblings. By the time he came along, they had learned English pretty well. There was pressure on him to learn English really well. And then when he wanted to learn Spanish in school, in junior high or high school, he was not allowed to because he had a Hispanic last name and therefore he already was a native speaker and it would be cheating basically and he was not allowed to take Spanish in school, so he had to take French. So he was not allowed to actually learn proper Spanish Spanish grammar because he stopped speaking Spanish when he was about four years old. So he's essentially fluent, but his grammar is like that of a four-year-old. So he was not going to be able really even to teach me to be a fluent speaker because of his own relationship to the language. My mother actually learned Spanish in college, so she speaks it better grammatically than my father. One of her siblings, so one of my non-Latina aunts, sent me Spanish language tapes when I was like eight or something. So I started learning Spanish then, and then I learned it more in middle school and high school, and I did a semester in college. So I'm not a native speaker of Spanish, and it wasn't spoken in my household. I taught myself as a kid, I learned in school, and then I practiced by watching telenovelas. So I can understand Spanish pretty well when I hear it spoken, and I could respond almost immediately in English. Conjugating the grammar on the spot in spoken conversation is really difficult for me. It's a little bit easier to respond in the written form, but even then I know that a lot of my constructions are not how a native speaker would make them. In addition to the language, we were not immersed in Puerto Rican culture when I was a kid, except for when we would go visit my grandparents in Puerto Rico. When I was there, I experienced the island and I experienced the non-tourist part of the island. My grandparents had settled on a farm in the middle of nowhere where I honestly don't don't actually know what their street address is. It's a gorgeous spot, but it's basically like visiting a third world country. The infrastructure is terrible. They lose power when it rains. You have to switch the water from the tank to the line when you're taking a shower versus using the water generally. They have no air conditioning and so on. But I learned about
about traditional Puerto Rican food. I learned about Puerto Rican social customs, basically. You know, I learned the way that when all my extended family would gather together, how they would talk to each other, how they would interact, the things people would do together, like play dominoes or fichas, which is very competitive. And there are these tree frogs called the coqui, which are really tiny, but really loud. And we would do excursions on the island, like to see the rainforest, El Yunque or Arecibo, the radio telescope that unfortunately seems to be irreparably damaged. And so for me, Puerto Rico has always been this kind of like magical place in a way, this place that I would visit every few years. And especially where my grandparents lived, it was like going somewhere out of time, you know, they didn't really have cell reception or internet and the phone didn't work all the time. And you could just unplug from everything and just kind of immerse yourself there. So like I said in a previous video, the term Latino didn't really hit the census until 2000. And so I was born before that. And in school on standardized tests, they force you to fill in something for your race and ethnicity. And I would always be incredibly confused because the options were Hispanic non-white or white non-Hispanic. And one, I have a Hispanic parent and an Eastern European parent. So I'm both. But even if I was 100% Puerto Rican, Puerto Ricans are mixed race. We're white and indigenous. Some people have a higher percentage of indigenous, but we're all a mixture. So I would be like, I don't know which one to pick. Sometimes I would just pick other. They've gotten a lot better now where you can often choose all that apply. But back then it was either or. And it was weird because I mostly did think of myself as Puerto Rican, despite not being raised in the culture and the language, but I've always had much more of a connection to my father's side of the family. And to the extent that I do have like an ethnic and cultural heritage in my life, there's always been a stronger connection to the Puerto Rican side versus the Eastern European side. And so it was like weird to me, even at say like eight years old to be like, okay, well, should I just like essentially erase that part of me and just say I'm white, not Hispanic? Or should I emphasize the Hispanic and say I'm not white? But that wasn't even consistent with my understanding at eight years old of what being Hispanic meant. So then when I was about to graduate high school and scholarships and things come up, one of my teachers entered me for some sort of scholarship for Hispanic people. And you only had to be like 25% Hispanic. And I was like, WTF, like I didn't ask you to enter me for this. And also like, what is the point? Like, because I was born with some Hispanic blood, you're gonna give me money? Like, it was so weird to me. But then when I was applying for colleges, they actually specifically had an option to say that you're Puerto Rican, I think on most of the applications, which was interesting. And I basically just picked that. My mother encouraged me to, she said that, okay, maybe they'll pick you because you're Puerto Rican, but whatever, that she went to an Ivy League school and she knows it was because she was poor and they were looking to fill their poor quota, but it didn't matter because she still got to take advantage of the education that she got. At the point when I was applying, college admissions were way more competitive than when she went and basically told me to take every advantage that I could, use every card that I was dealt, so to speak. So I did it, even though I felt kind of weird about it, but I never got involved at college in any Latino community, Latin American, anything. Because like I said in other videos, I don't really believe in the idea of the Latino community. I think for a while when I was in the social justice community, I kind of got swept into that. And I do use the term Latino to refer to that segment of the population for various reasons. Like when I'll talk about the fact that Hollywood talks a big game about diversity or whatever, but like at the end of the day, they don't really give a shit about Latinos or they don't know what to do with Latinos. Like when I talked about James Roday and how they were like, you have a Hispanic last name, but you look white. And it's like, go to Latin American countries and see what people actually look like, you ignorant sons of bitches. Like if there had been a Puerto Rican club, maybe I would have associated with it, but I just thought of myself really more as Puerto Rican than Latina. And I was still pretty much using the term Hispanic. My family was using the term Hispanic. I don't really remember when I switched over to saying Latino or Latina. I think at some point I perceived that that had become the dominant linguistic choice. Maybe I started to see it on forms that asked for race and ethnicity. And probably it was being used more and more on Tumblr. So I'm not a social justice warrior and I don't make this like my mission in life to deal with this issue. But I do sometimes get really annoyed or 
or can have a chip on my shoulder about people's ignorance about the Latino community, but their willingness to speak so authoritatively in a way that they wouldn't about other groups. Like I would have people that would say ignorant things like, oh, well, your last name is X. Are you related to this other person with the last name X? Or, oh, you're Latina. I can tell you have that Latin fire or asking about my salsa skills or just like other ignorant crap. And then I have the challenge of not looking Latina or as some people would say, I have white passing privilege. And so then people feel like relieved when they find out I'm only half. And that explains the way I look basically, even though I'm like, no, it doesn't because otherwise they don't understand. They're like, but your last name is very Latina, but your face looks like, you know, your face. Like in the area I grew up in, there was a lot of Latinos from places where people looked more the way people expected them to look. And I'd be in the doctor's office and they'd be calling my last name. And the person with the clipboard is still looking around the room, looking for someone who looks Latino and all they see is me. The same thing would happen in school with like a new class and a new roll call. And when they'd get to me, I'd see this look like, you're not what I expected you to look like. The reason I wanted to bring up me being Puerto Rican is that, like I said, Puerto Ricans are US citizens. So not all Puerto Ricans have the same positions that other Latin American people do about the topic of immigration because it's not really a subject of concern for them. They will talk more about whether or not Puerto Rico should become a state. And also Puerto Ricans are incredibly common in certain areas of the United States and not in others. Where I grew up, Puerto Ricans were almost non-existent, but in New York City, they are ubiquitous. And the same is true with Latinos from from other countries. There are certain enclaves, like you find a lot of Mexicans and therefore really great Mexican food in Southern California, but you might not find as many Mexicans in Miami versus say Cubans or Puerto Ricans. Oh, and people would say things to me growing up like, well, your last name is Hispanic, so you must like Mexican food. And I'm like, but I'm not Mexican. Puerto Rican food is incredibly different from Mexican food because you know, it's an island. The geography is different. Plant life and the animals and the technology techniques you use to cook the food. Like Puerto Rico has plantains, platanos, so they use those in their cooking. Also, there's cod, so you have bacalao, which is salted cod. Puerto Rican food really isn't that spicy in terms of heat. There's a lot of rice and beans. And I mentioned in the previous video about certain words like torta versus pastel, and in a lot of places, pastel means sweet cake. But in Puerto Rico, pasteles are essentially their version of tamales. So if you want a pastel in Puerto Rico, you will be given something tasty, but it will not be what you're expecting. So to me, all these countries are so different. It's like I said in the other video, this would be like saying that, well, Western Europeans, you're all the same. No, they're not. They all speak English now in addition to their native languages, but they have very different histories. They have very different cuisines, different geographies, different cultural norms even. The one thing I can say that the Latino community maybe has in common is there's a high proportion of religious people, primarily Catholics. And also there's a very strong emphasis on family and respect for family, respect for your elders. And despite the reputation of machismo, when you are being raised, if you are a young man, both of your parents have the authority. So if your mom tells you to mop and vacuum and sweep, you bet your ass you're gonna do it. Or in Puerto Rico, you're gonna get the chancleta, the sandal. You do not want mom to pull out the chancleta do your chores, respect your mom. So I guess my main point in talking about my own relationship to my identity and how that relates to the concept of Latinx is that the term Latinx just makes me roll my eyes because it's like, I don't even see the need for the term, the Latino community in the first place. I don't think there's a Latino day parade here in New York. There's a Puerto Rican day parade and there's the Dominican parade. All these people celebrate their specific ethnic identities, not a pan-ethnic identity. I'll use the term to just talk about, like I said, how Latinos respect their family or they can be loud and boisterous and blast their music. And we may have different food, but food is like a huge part of the ethnic identity. But I also wanted to give more specificity to what I had said previously, that there is such a wide range of experiences for people who have Latin American backgrounds. You can be someone who was born in that country and then lives there your whole life. You can be 
be someone that was born there, lives there for a time, moves to the United States. You can be someone who has parents that are from a specific place, but you were born in the United States. You can have that experience and have English as your native language. You can have that experience and have Spanish as your native language. You can have parents that immersed you in your ethnic backgrounds, culture from the time you were little. You can have parents that kind of rejected that culture or didn't connect to it themselves. I kind of connected more to it through my grandparents and then also through my aunt and uncle. You can be one of these young people who goes to college and learns about the term Latinx and feels like this helps them and they want to be part of it and they want to use the term. Or you can be someone like me who thinks it's silly and you can be someone who thinks it's destroying the Spanish language and you can be someone who thinks that it's not. But it's the same way I feel about the LGBT community. It's not really a thing in my opinion. I don't relate to it because these are all these separate groups that have been combined together for the purposes of creating a demographic, for political purposes, for a shorthand. But at the end of the day, you've lumped a bunch of people together that have separate cultures and interests and concerns and don't always get along. Puerto Ricans have very strong opinions about Cubans and Dominicans in particular, our Caribbean siblings. And Cubans have strong opinions about Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and Dominicans have strong opinions about Puerto Ricans and Cubans. It's not one big happy family, even though we have similar cuisine and and music. So this video served the twofold purpose of elaborating a little bit more on my thoughts about Latinx. I'm perfectly fine if people really want a gender neutral term with Latine. I don't personally see the need for it. I'm fine with the masculine being the gender neutral, but I'm a privileged white passing cis female person. So obviously my opinion doesn't count. I'm a libertarian. So if people have their own events and communities, and they want to use this term, fine. But anyone who's going to try to tell me that I'm wrong for not using the term Latinx, especially a person who does not have a Latin American background, who's going to come in here and tell me what term to use, I'm really going to give a piece of my mind. And if they're the social justice type, I'll just use their own logic against them and tell them that they're being bigoted and oppressing me with their linguistic imperialism. Oh, one point I want to make on the concept of imperialism is from my perspective like yo, just accept it. Puerto Ricans today are the product of the conquistadors mixing with the indigenous people. And the same goes for all these other Latin American countries. In the Spanish speaking countries, Spanish is a part of the culture and it has an imperialist heritage. It is what it is. It's a mixed culture, a blend of all these different things. And that's what makes these cultures what they are. And yeah, they'll probably continue to evolve and change. But this whole like linguistic imperialism concept is so weird to me. One of the points I didn't really bring up previously was that one of the guys who wrote the article for Swarthmore College arguing against the use of Latinx basically said that this isn't really a concern for the average Latino. It's mostly a concern among the academics, among the activists, among the college students. I'm pretty sure if I did a survey of my entire Latino family, my dad probably knows about the term because I've told him about it and maybe he's seen it in a corporate setting but he certainly doesn't use it. And I don't think anyone in my Latino family uses the term. And I think if I tried to explain it to most of the family members that still live in Puerto Rico, who are generally of the older generation, they would probably be like WTF. So it remains to be seen what will happen when, you know, all the old fogies die out and the youngins take over and whether they manage to make Latinx take off. I guess we shall see. I will not be using it. They can line me up against the wall with the rest of the wrong thinkers, non-progressives who refuse to march bravely into the future of the Spanish language. Anyway, so I hope this video contextualized my thoughts a little bit more and there's more I could say on it, but I think that was a good overview. If you have any questions about my thoughts on the topic of Latinx or my thoughts on the topic of the Latino community, on Latino identity, Hispanic identity, identity, etc. my own personal experiences, let me know, leave a comment, I can comment back, or if I get enough comments, I could do another video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I will have more content for you very soon.